You might say the ingredients of the book In Search of the Perfect Loaf, a home baker's odyssey, include one part travel memoir, a dash of history, a sprinkling of science, technique, and a handful of bread recipes from around the world. Samuel Fromart, journalist, baker, editor, and author of In Search of the Perfect Loaf, Welcome to Evening Edition. Thank you for having me. Now, you're a journalist, editor of the Food and Environment Reporting Network. How did you turn your hobby into baking bread into a career and a book? Well, uh, let me go back. I, I first started it because it was a real way to relax after a day of being, a, you know, in the stressful profession of being a journalist, and I would like to slap the dough on the counter. But I got an opportunity to go to Paris to work in a boulangerie, uh, the premise of the story was, could I learn how to make a baguette and then translate those lessons into the home? And, and you did. I did, and I put my bread up against the best bakeries in Washington, D.C., and my loves won. So <laughs> that was kind of a crowning moment. <laughs> Defining moment there. Now, aside from Paris, you've traveled to a few other places in search of that perfect loaf. Uh, what were some of the key lessons you learned from uh, other bakers around the world? Well, I've, I visited a... Uh, uh, bakery in Berlin and I wanted to go to Germany because whole grain breads there are, are really valued as just bread. It's not, they don't eat them for health reasons, it's just what they eat. So I wanted to learn uh, the lessons of how they make those breads. I worked with a baker in the south of France who also grew his own ancient varieties of wheat and milled them and then baked them. And I worked with bakers around the U.S. sort of learning different lessons from each one and they were all, they all have a very personal approach. So um, everything that I learned, you know, I, I, got, I got a lesson from, from each one and tried to bring them home into and the kitchen. And you put some of those tips in the book, like the, the wet dough. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. All the, all, the, all the baker's secrets are in the book. <laughs> okay, now I know that, um, you know, you touched on this. You said the ancient wheat. You actually reveal a little bit of history about uh, wheat and, and, and bread, I should say, and, and its importance throughout the world. Tell us some of those facts. Well, I was surprised to learn that uh, wheat is the most consumed commodity after rice, and actually it present it, it, it offers uh, it pre uh, twenty percent of the of humanity's calories come so from wheat. So worldwide, twenty percent comes right. through their and it's calories. the number one source of protein in the world. I know many of us in 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 the U.S. and other uh, wealthier countries of the world are trying to avoid gluten, but for the vast amount of humanity, it's their single highest source of protein. Do you have a favorite type of, or style of bread? I would have to say no. I mean, I, all the breads I make are kind of favorites, and I'll make them for a while, and then I'll discover something else, and I'll, I'll sort of go on to that. But the ones that I, I write about in the book, um, I still make today you know, it, quite often in my own kitchen. Now, your book does talk a lot about different grains, uh, and I don't think maybe some of us are that savvy on that. <laughs> what should we know about the grains being used in our bread? Well, the grains that are used today to make flour are quite uniform, and when we when white flour is milled in an industrial process, we lose about 16% of the kernel. And the, the part of the kernel that's left behind is, is also the most nutritious part. So that's why I would emphasize, really, as sort of the, the main part of your diet, if you're going to eat bread, it should probably be whole grains. And I sort of even though I write about the baguette in some, some depth, I sort of view it in, in my own life as kind of a treat. You know, it's because it's, it's sweet. The white flour um, metabolizes much more quickly. You kind of get that sugar rush. And if you heat, eat whole grains, that doesn't happen. How do you keep the nutrients in your own bread? Uh, by baking with whole grains. Uh, and also fermenting with sourdough, which is, I know, a little tricky, for, but, but if you follow the, the instructions in this book, you might take a stab at it. And it actually, sourdough adds, uh, brings uh, out nutrition that's in the grain that w otherwise wouldn't be available to us. Well, your book touches on global warming, which is a little bit of a surprise. What is the link between climate change and wheat? Well, you see that in California today, don't you, with a lot of the problems that farmers are having. Well, in the Midwest, um, because of gradual warming of temperatures, the wheat belt is moving northward. And the projections that I've seen for 2050 is wheat may, uh, much more production may move into Canada. And one map even projected some areas of Alaska that might be good for wheat production. You know, at, at the same time, areas like uh, Texas or in more, um, you know, food-stressed areas of the world like India 
South India, they're going to lose their uh, potentially lose their wheat production with you know vast costs to to just feeding their people. So it may be migrating. So the good news on that is they're still going to be bred in 20 years. There it <laughs> is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I want to let folks know that you can find uh, one of Sam's bread recipes at kpbs.org. Uh, author and bread baker Sam Fromartz. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Thanks.